okay and we're live good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are in the world i'm back it's ingram jones and we're here with the bayloric tv boxing channel and last night wow what a night it was a night of disappointment anger um passion whatever you want to call it a lot was said last night absolutely and and um there's a lot of things i want to talk about but before i start talking i always like to check and see whether this is going out live or not so let me see that it's going out live and then we can get going is there anything live yet which is odd normally I hear my voice in the background i'll just keep going i guess but anyway Last night, before I even go on about last night, I'm going to talk about this morning. And I'm going to talk about the fact that there are many people who have subscribed to my channel. And many people who have spoken have spoken to me directly and indirectly since Baylor has been about, and not just in boxing, but just in life as we do have. And um the one thing i want to make very clear is that i don't i don't intentionally go out to offend or to upset people that's not me that's not what my show has ever been about so i want to clear that for a start secondly last night i'm not sure if anybody was aware there was over I don't know 550 comments in the room and among that there are loyal supporters there are people who say things to wind you up there are people that have great knowledge in boxing and there are those people who are casuals and they're all wrapped into one room and everybody has an opinion in this sport some are more informed than others okay now i want to get something very very clear here that i'm not billy big balls i never ever believed i was billy big balls in fact anybody who I, I don't have a lot of time for people who are billy big balls um billy big balls is in in the term as i'm the big man i'm the big shot you have an opinion and it doesn't really matter and i'm going to slate that opinion whether i like it or whether you like it or not and i'll just trample over your opinion and it's not about that in fact half the reason why i was as visibly um, passionate as i was last night was because there always seemed to be one opinion which was price is shit he needs to retire and i was anti that um and that's the reason why it came out the way i did and i could see typically in the british media how you build somebody up and then you're quite happy to knock them down it's just typical british uh, media it's always been the case not just with boxing but it's just in life in general you've seen the way they just you know they hyped david beckham up and then they dropped him you know and then they obviously built him back up again so you know um but there's lots of examples of that and i just didn't want to be one who just went along with what everybody else was saying and of course i had my own opinion as well so for those supporters who've been there for the since the day one for example um a gentleman by the name of matthew wall um hi matthew i know that you've tuned in and i want to say sincerely i apologize to you yesterday um i don't know if you're aware that while i was going through i skipped over a lot of comments yesterday i had to skip through a lot of comments and then try and respond to some i was skipping out of some comments and sometimes when you skip over comments and this is no excuse this is just i'm just explaining myself um sometimes you skip over comments um you can skip over comments and you can respond to a comment and then while you, you can see another comment that can anger you at the same time so there are people that are in the room that do leave comments that are not helpful that do leave comments just to stir up and to wind up and to cause problems and so in all of that last night and all how i was feeling last night maybe i miscommunicated what my message truly really was so my apologies my sincerest apologies i value you 
Matthew and many others out there. Um, some may have felt that I insulted them. I was being condescending. Yes, I may have been condescending, but it wasn't condescending to those people that I value or that the, those people that um, you know know um, I have good intentions. I want to debate. It's not about that. Uh, the condescending probably came from those people who come on the channel looking to troll, looking to cause problems, looking to to upset and to people like that to be very dismissive of them. And uh, yeah, there are people like that that are racist and bigoted and 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 have those opinions. So I wanted to clear that up first and foremost. Those attitudes because those are the same attitudes I want to really go on to before I go and talk about price and Tepa to, to clear that up um, or to share my opinions on that. There are a lot of people, good people, that have been, um, their morals, their, their, their feelings, their emotions, their beliefs, their good shows have been stopped because of uh, the trolls we have in society today those people that will come on the show and have derogatory comments and racist comments and leave spam comments those people come on the show and um, it's easy to you can block them but some people are not as thick skinned as others and some people are very sensitive to stuff like that and it, it, it seeps deep not just into um you know uh just doing a show or to doing a reflection on the boxing match you know because they care and they love the sport as you do but they also um afterwards it affects them psychologically so there are people i know that have been really good at doing the sport and really good at you know who've been inspiration to me that no longer are on a channel some have had their youtube channel they've deleted their youtube channel altogether but they've been characters they've been personalities they've been a little different but their channel has either been deleted or well, they no longer are on YouTube because there have been trolls out there who have said things that are not particularly nice. So again, my apologies. Um, and that's where I'm at with that. So I, I want to clear that up. It's not probably what people want to say or people want to hear or people want to um, I, I appreciate, you know, I think some people just expect me to get on here and do a show that is just, you know, uh, not, not addressing people's emotions and feelings. Because, you know, if you don't talk boxing, then I'm not interested. Well, that's you. And that, that's 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 how you feel. But I also appreciate fans. I appreciate followers. And I appreciate people's emotions and feelings. So I want to know. I want you to know I sincerely apologize to you. And I am sorry um, for that. Am I sorry for expressing my opinion? No. Am I sorry for being uh, diverse? And because a well-known chat, a YouTube channel say, David Price should retire, I should subscribe to that? No. Does that mean that I disrespect those channels and I won't watch those channels? No, I'm still gonna watch those channels. But that's what makes the world uh, the diverse place that it is. And I don't expect everyone to agree with what I've got to say. And, you know, I don't expect everyone to support what I say. But what I do want is just a little respect um, in terms of, look, you've got an opinion. You think Price should retire. I don't think Price should retire. Fine. But, you know, uh, when you start getting condescending and start getting personal, that's where there's a problem. So I wanted to say that. And I wanted to say thank you for your support. So we've cleared that up. So I know there are people in the room, so I should address that those people in the room. Don't want to annoy anybody else. So let's 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 oppress those. Let's deal with those issues first. Matthew Wall says, "Love the fact that this is scheduled on the time for lunch break during the Ashes series." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, Tiver Tap says, "Hi Ingram, nice one for doing another video on this." Agreed. On the bright side, Salon said that they aren't giving up on price and have a contingency plan laid out for him. Fantastic. Uh, Matthew also says, good to see the promoters sticking by their fighters through tough times. Agreed. Um, Tiva Tap says, good on Salon. They probably have a backup plan if Jack beats Groves too. 
Uh, Matthew Wall says, good comparison. I can't see Groves losing to Jack, though, if I'm honest, what do you think? So we'll, 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 we will go back and talk about Groves and Jack, Badu Jack, but I just want to stick with this price Tepe thing. And maybe like now that I'm a little less emotional and le less emotionally charged, I'm going to talk about this in a less emotionally charged manner and kind of lay down or lay out my uh, thoughts on this. I think from the start of David Price's professional career, there's been some fundamental uh, things in place that I believe could have been done differently. And um, I think first and foremost, I think Price should have had a, a professional trainer that was of world-class um, ability, one who had proven world-class ability to produce a world-class champion. What I mean by that is um, Price, I believe, knew Franny Smith from the amateur days. And I believe that um, he took Franny, Franny Smith to him, with him on the journey to professional ranking. And so from my understanding, um, and by talking to Franny Smith and doing an interview with him, it was all well and good when Price was knocking over people that he was meant to knock over. But as he moved up in levels, price never improved. So when he actually met somebody who would hit him back, who would take his best punch, who would slip his best punch and get inside, or would give him angles, he wasn't ready for that. And so what I'm trying to say is this. I would like to see David Price have a trainer that would have been able to protect his chin better i.e. give him better technical advice, technical, um, so that he could have worked on that instead of now age 33, as a lot of people like to throw at me and say to me, oh, when he's 33 now, he's not going to improve. Well, I would, I, I still disagree. So the fights he's had and knockout defeats he's had, I think he's had the same person in his corner, if I'm correct, which has been Franny Smith. Um, I could see improvements under Tommy Brooks, you know, but still, that wasn't long enough for me. I would like to see David Price now cut ties with Franny Smith. I don't know. Lennox Lewis made some comments in his um, Twitter feed. He said that Price isn't prepared to make the sacrifices necessary. Lennox Lewis also said that when he tries to talk to Price, he thinks he's a really good guy. He thinks he's got all the attributes to be a champion, but he's not prepared to make the sacrifices is not prepared to make the changes. Now, if it's down to David Price at the end of the day, who he has as his trainer, his management team, it is a positive to hear that the Sourlands are going to stay behind David Price, even though he's been knocked out now. That's good. And I'm sure they had that backup plan just in case this did happen to David Price. But David Price, you know, there are things that are apparent that all the fans are talking about that the fact that you know he got knocked out he's not got a good chin but this is heavyweight boxing and you don't really want to be getting hit cleanly on the chin or if you do you want to keep it as limited as possible um, with the style that price has got at the moment that's not going to happen that's not going to be the case he has no sort of understanding of distance and timing i said this last night his left jab is a problem um, he doesn't have a ramrod jab you know, he doesn't have a jab that has commands authority. It's a, a flicking left jab, and that's a problem in itself. You know, it doesn't bode confidence. Price doesn't come to a ring with bode, it's exuding confidence, but nor would you. And, you you know, after being knocked out the way he got knocked out last night by Tepper, I think uh, that doesn't do your confidence any favours. And if you're getting knocked about in sparring as well, again, that doesn't do you any favours. And then building a false sense of, of confidence, you know, confidence based on maybe knocking guys out that are not as good as you in sparring. And, uh, you know, I heard that Pulev used to beat, beat Price up a lot in sparring as well. But then you hear rumours that Price knocked Joshua out in sparring. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of stuff there. But all I'm saying is that I don't think we've seen the best of David Price 
under a top class trainer. That's what I'm saying. I don't think we have. And I just think that he should give it one more go. One more go with a world class trainer and a world class team. You know, the Sourlands are a world class outfit. There's no doubt about it as a promotion outfit. They're world class in that. And they can get the fights for price. There's no doubt about that as well. But he needs, he definitely needs price. A, what's my phone going off? Probably a Twitter message. Um, he definitely needs a world class team in terms of, you know, a sports psychologist. Um, one person I could probably uh, uh, I mentioned straight away is Stuart Howe. You know, he's working with fighters at all different levels. Um, also, um, he needs a world-class trainer who's going to mentor Price, not somebody who's going to hold a pad for him and do the ring walk with him and, 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 and tell him he's a, he's a good fighter. He needs somebody who's going to give him a cuddle. I'm not serious. He needs Price needs somebody who's going to give him a cuddle. Somebody to say to him, you know what, Pricey? Yes, you've been knocked out. Yes, you've been beat. Yes, uh, you know, you haven't been at the races, at the big fights, but that's going to change. He needs a trainer that's going to give him that. He's 33 years old. People are talking like he's 50 years old. He's 33 years old. And, you know, I don't know in your walking life whether you yourself have, uh, uh, have been written off and be told you couldn't do something or being told you're not good enough at something, or being told, you know, why are you bothering? And then you've, in some people's lives, have turned it around and have, have got the better and done well and succeeded. And I think if in my walk and where I've been, and I've been a coach, you know, and um, I've been a champion in, 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 in various areas of life, when the doctors told me for seven years when I had chronic fatigue syndrome, you know what, you will never live a normal life, you will never... Uh, be able to live without tablets you know if you don't have to take these tablets you're going to die you know we're not even talking about sport now it's boxing talk about life and a lot of people seem to not want to hear what i've got to say but that's beside the point um when you can come back from those situations in life then i think uh you know yes price has been knocked out badly <laughs> let's get right let's get it straight here he got badly knocked out last night and uh, if he continues in the same vein, he'll continue to get badly knocked out. And um, some two ill-advised fights, the fight he had against um, Tony Thompson didn't help. And the Tepper fight didn't help. Um, you just think to yourself, had he had a world-class training in this corner, uh, world-class training would not have allowed him to have come out and throw that left jab the way he was throwing it. He would have given him distance and timing and told him how to fight Tepper. I mean, he's a world-class puncher price. He's got high, he's got reach, you know, and, you know, Emmanuel Stewart would have been the person that a lot of people would have been calling out. And I said, hey, he's been knocked out. Let's go to Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel Stewart was the guy that revitalized a lot of people's careers. I remember when Dennis Andres um, was a big supporter of Dennis Andres, where he got beaten and battered by Thomas Hearns. And then Emmanuel Stewart took him in. And, and, and Dennis Andres went on to become a world champion again and a very respectable world champion, making various title defences. Um, you know, so I think the right trainer who's going to not just mentor David Price, and I guess it might be easier now for David Price to find a trainer now, whereas before a trainer would have just sided with Price because, oh, we had that defeat. Let me see what I can do to make him a better fighter. You need a, a trainer that is going to be able to invest the time and he's going to invest, you know. What he doesn't need around him is people telling him he needs to retire and he doesn't need the British press setting him up. Um, setting him up like a... like a, He got he got well and, well and truly set up last night in Box Nation. Well and truly set up. You know, oh, well, this is the final fight for Pricey, the end of his career. You know, and, and that just that just opens a can of worms for other mis, misinformed fans to say, oh, you know what, Price is retired, he's finished. Well, no, he's not finished. He got beat by Tepper. And I said before, Tepper, don't know how good Tepper is. Let's see who be, end up, ends up going to beat Tepper. I'm not saying Tepper is the next coming of Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson. But what I'm telling you is that boy can punch. He knows how to close the range down. He was able to execute a game plan. If you know how to execute a game plan, you know how to close the range down and you're a big boy at six foot five and you can punch 
and you're prepared to get in there with an equally big puncher, you know, um, and do what you did. I mean, that takes some doing. So in terms of Tepa, um, I would be so quick to write him off. And now if Tepa closed the range down, got inside on someone like Deontay Wilder and landed that same punch in Deontay Wilder, now, let's be honest, if you look at Deontay Wade, he has an inability to block a left jab. Go back and look at the Molina fight. You know, and Molina was able to land the punch and visibly hurt Wilder. Now, if somebody like Tepper's in there, who I think is better than Molina, to be honest, um, and hits equally as hard or harder than, 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 than Tepper, if he's able to, you know, be there and capitalise on and that sort of power, who knows? I mean, Tepper against Shagayev, I mean, what happens there? I mean, somebody say, oh, you know, he wouldn't be Vladimir Klitschko. But let's be honest, how many people in the heavyweight division can beat Vladimir Klitschko? You know, we're going to find out if Tyson Fury can beat Vladimir Klitschko. And if Vladimir Klitschko beats Tyson Fury, then you're going to go and call to Wilder. And if Vladimir beats Wilder, then who else are you going to pull up? Another prospect. So you're going to jump to Anthony Joshua, who's not ready for something like uh, Vladimir Klitschko yet. And yet we still need to know how good Anthony Joshua is. So, you know, I think to put Tepper from David Price to Vladimir Klitschko is a bit harsh. But I do think that there are levels in this game and there's management in this game. And um, I think if Deontay Wilder was managed the way that um, David Price was managed, we might be saying the same thing about Deontay Wilder. Let's see when Deontay Wilder, let's see the same night that and the same amount of fights that that price had because i like deontay's got 33 fights if we start pricing this put deontay wilder in the same fights the tony thompson fights and the tepa fight would wilder have won against tony thompson or would he have won against tepa i mean he's been very well managed Deontay Wilder, very well managed. And he fought Stavon because he had to fight Stavon, you know. Um, and he did well against Stavon. Um, regardless of what condition Stavon was in, whether he was dehydrated or not, he still did well. So I just think that, yes, I go back and say Price is flawed. He is. But he's got a lot to work with. And I think a top class trainer, not a fan, a top class trainer can give him hope. But he needs to make the corrections himself. He needs to say, you know what, this trainer, Franny Smith, isn't, it isn't, it doesn't work. He may be a great mate, but that ties has to be cut. He needs to put, he needs to put the work in. Um, and him training in Liverpool, or I heard he's training in Liverpool, training at home, it always worries me when you hear fighters training like that who's training but i don't like the sound of that or comfort if you want to be heavyweight champion of the world then make the sacrifice necessary lennox lewis made those sacrifices and when he didn't when he didn't prepare properly got knocked out by alone mccall and got knocked out by hassan brackman two fights he did not prepare and he got taught the harsh lesson that no matter how big you are and how strong you are, how skilled you are, if you don't prepare, you will get beat. You will get found out. And he did get found out in two fights with McCall and Rackman. And then you saw when he was properly prepared what he did and how he handled both fighters. So more people in the room. Let's find out what people are saying. Uh, Ruben Caddick says that um, Tepe is a TBE, the best ever. I don't know. I wouldn't go as far as that, Ruben. But I certainly think that um, Tepe is a, is a, a, I think he's a force to be reckoned with. I think anybody who closes the range down that quickly and is able to execute a game plan, you know, uh, I think he's a good fighter. I think I'm not saying he's the best ever, <laughs> um, but I think he's going to be a threat for a lot of the heavyweights. Um, with that punch power, because I mean, that's some serious punch power he's got there. Um, you know, I just, I just would like to see Pricey again come back, um, maybe take a time out and really take a time out and really think if you're going to go forward in this career, mate, make some serious decisions. If you want to be heavyweight champion of the world or, be, or have a chance to become heavyweight champion of the world, 
then put yourself in the best positions. Give yourself a chance to, uh, to mold with a world-class trainer. If you look at Amir Khan when he got splattered and knocked out by uh, Prescott, and you know, even then he wasn't a world champion. Um, I remember when he got knocked out, people saying, Oh, it's the end of his career, he should retire. Remember, they said that about Amir Khan. Those same people who said, You know, Amir Khan's going to be a world champion, they then determined and said he's going to he should retire. He then left the UK, he went to America and joined it with Freddie Roach. Okay, and um went up won world titles was ranked i believe number one at one point in the light welterweight division ranked, ranked number one in by the ring magazine amir khan so he was the number one rightly or wrongly he was he was recognized as the number one fighter in the light welterweight division until he met danny garcia um and again bad tactics decided to go and mix it with garcia stand and trade with Garcia and he had a terrible training it's a uh, camp I believe you know and you get rocked in sparring and stuff like that trying to be macho and instead of boxing using his brain fought with his heart and we all know what happened with him there so you know I still think Price has got a career I really do but I think he needs to seriously address his trainer seriously addressed management seriously address um technique mindset direction and he always looks price like sad he looks very sad he looks very and i looked at a picture of him when he was weighing in against um tepper he just looked vacant he just looked vacant and I was talking to uh, Adam Forsey from Forsey's uh, Sports Media last night, and he said that he looked at Price last night. He just looked sad. And the whole thing about the gloves and the whole arguing the gloves with Tepper's side, Price didn't need to be anywhere near that last night. And uh, he looked distracted. He just didn't see, he seemed vacant. He's, he just seems like a guy who just doesn't want to be in boxing. He seems like a guy who doesn't, he doesn't want to talk about the Tony Thompson fight. He doesn't want to, he doesn't, just doesn't seem to want to be there. And the, that's the wrong place to be in a sport of boxing. You know, um, it's a brutal sport. And if you don't really want to be in that sport, then, yeah, for those who have just joined us, I just wanted to say again, repeating what I've said, um, last night was a very passionate show. I apologize to any fans that thought that may, they may have felt that I was being condescending. I wasn't being condescending. In fact, I was trying to, you know, I had an opinion and, um, you know, I, I appreciate the fans. And if anyone was upset, I apologize because that's not the way I conduct business, as they say. And uh, it's not the character that I am. But I was just kind of speaking up for a man, David Price, who I don't, I've never met Price. I've never met David Price. I have no affinity to David Price, you know, but I just don't like to see somebody getting dogged out the way he was getting dogged out last night. And uh, ultimately, his decision is his decision whether he retires or not. Not the fans on Twitter, not the fans on Facebook, not 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 not, not the experts that sit on a sit on a you know the comfort of a of a studio and say that oh it's the end of pricing. I, I don't think so. I think it's down to David Price if he wants to retire. You know, so. That's, that's the way I'm feeling about it, basically. But if he is, he's going to continue, like I said, he needs to make serious adjustments to training camp, adjustments to trainer, adjustments to direction, adjustments to mindset, a whole load of things. And he doesn't need a guy to hold pads and tell him he's the greatest. He needs a guy who's going to cuddle him and say, you know, Pricey, we've been there. It's been a hard time. But let's make things let's make things easier for ourselves. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, Caddick said, Ruben Caddick says, Tepper can beat Wilder, in my opinion. Uh, Justin Bilal says, there are comparisons with Khan and Price, but I feel Khan has a fighter's heart that Price seems to lack. Interesting, Justin, I agree there. 
because uh, Justin Bilal says, Ruben, you aren't old enough to be Fury's biggest fan. You probably weren't allowed to watch boxing until a couple of years ago, LOL. Uh, Tiver Tap says, agree, he doesn't He doesn't look good at the weigh-in. Uh, Ruben Caddick says, sorry, who has a Tyson Fury mouse mat? Me. Uh, can you get him on your show? David Price. Well, strange enough, I was, I was on the verge of getting a David Price interview. It was a David Price and a, a Frank Maloney interview, which was now Kelly Maloney. And I said, let's do this. Let's try and get this interview after the Tony Thompson fight. And there was just a bad feeling in my gut, a really bad feeling in my gut. And of course, we all know what happened after that. And, um, you know, there was also that, that, that bit of confusion between Price and Fury when I interviewed Tyson Fury. And he basically said that in that was my first interview I did with Tyson Fury. He said that Fury... Uh, no, Fury said that Price lacked heart and lacked uh, fight, a fighter's heart, basically. And then Franny Smith, the trainer of David Price, said that David Price would walk through Tyson Fury. And I think uh, Team Fury got quite offended by that. And, um, yeah, that, that sort of broke down communications in some way with David Price and Team Price. And, you know, it was just slightly ugly. But... Um, all I did was give an interview on just interview to hear what, you know, hear more about Franny Smith. I wanted to know what he was as a trainer, his, his ideas, and um, that was it. So it's not a knocking of Franny Smith. I just think that this isn't about personalities, in my opinion. It's about, for me, you want the best team beside you to be to become the best in the world. And, and it's the same thing for Dave Caldwell. This is another example of a guy that I think is a very nice guy, um, a really nice guy, but I just don't think he is good enough as a trainer to take Tony Belly to the next level. The cruiserweight division is hard enough as it is. But, you know, I've seen him four or five fights now working with Dave Colwell, and Tony Belly still doesn't know how to throw a straight right hand. You know, so, um, yeah, I am. Um, it, it just, it, it's just, it's just analysis, things I'm seeing. So it's not knocking, it's not hating, it's not, it's not, it's just trying to be constructive. So, yeah, so David Price, wherever you are in the world at the moment, I hope he's got some good people around him. I hope last night, after that knockout defeat, he could go home. I guess the one person he will be going home with is Fanny Smith. I think Fanny Smith will be there and support him, who's been there from beginning to end. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, um it's jay beats by the way oh okay okay cool hi jay beats um hope you're well appreciate you what you do um yeah i, I don't know i just think people are too quick in this world to just dismiss just dis dismiss people and uh, dismiss people's careers in boxing just because they lose one or two fights and um i've seen people become champion after eight or nine defeats um so it's not about it's it's not about the defeat so much it's about what you're learning from those defeats and and price if he's learning anything he will know that there's a reason why vladimir klitschko fights the way that he does there's a reason why vladimir klitschko is as protective as he is there's a reason why emmanuel stewart set up the style that vladimir klitschko is so well known of today and i always believed i always believed always 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 believed that david price would have been best suited training with emmanuel stewart he would have been best suited training with that klitschko sort of style now i don't know if jonathan banks can do anything for david price i don't know because that would be a good camp for price to be in i certainly know that anthony joshua um i could see anthony joshua transferring over to the the, the, the um the david the 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 Banks camp or the, the Klitschko camp after he gets knocked out. I can see that happening. You, you can see that because I'm of, I'm of the belief that um, jo Anthony Josh's career is going down the same same pathway of David Price. If you look carefully, he hasn't had a gut check yet. He hasn't been on the chin yet, but everyone's praising him and raising him up. And if you look and you go back and listen to people talking about David Price, I would get 
boxing fan. So go back and listen to the things people were saying about David Price before the Tony Thompson fight. And sit down and listen to these pundits that we the same pundits that we're listening to today telling us that Price should retire. But the same pundits that told you there's nothing wrong with Price's chin. If he gets knocked down, he'll get back up. The same pundits that told and told you, you know what, Price got done by a lucky punch by Tony Thompson. The same pundits that told you that Tony Thompson didn't come, he came for a payday, he was overweight, and he, and you know, these are people that are informing you before the fight or misinforming you before the fight. And Tony Thompson doesn't only do once, does him twice. When a pundit tells and tells you that Tony Thompson got lucky, got 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 price of a lucky punch. If a pundit tells you that it was a lucky punch, that I don't think there's any real lucky punch in boxing because the whole idea of you being in the ring is to throw punches. Um, you know, uh, um, you know. I think maybe the difference between that instinctive punch. You know, like Lennox Lewis when he fought Frank Bruner when he was down. You saw him in the corner, he went that, that, and then he threw the left hook. It was more instinctive that, as opposed to it being a punch where you actually one, two, three, and throwing that punch out of um, planned or trained for, you know? That's slight like difference. And I just think that we need to be a little bit more careful. We need to, we need to examine our pundits a little bit more. Me included, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a pundit, but we need to examine our pundits more. We need to watch their records when we listen to them. It's, it's very good to look at fighters' records and, and talk about fighters' records and talk about, oh, this guy's unbeaten, or oh, he's not fight, he's not fought enough people, he's fought a lot of bums, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. But I guess look at these pundits. Let's go back and look at these pundits and what they say and how many times are they bang on the money? You know, um, how many, how many, how much times do they bang on the money? How many times have you caught them saying one thing one week and then saying something contradictory the next? You know, I mean, if you, if for example, if you if you really want to go there, let let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, I'm gonna say something. Eddie Hearn. If 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 there's ever a schizophrenic person out there, you've got to talk about Eddie Hearn. If you go on YouTube, you'll see videos of um. Eddie Hearn, when he was with Carl Frampton, saying that they'd knock Scott Quigg out. And as soon as Eddie, uh, Frampton left Eddie Hearn, he just said then Scott Quigg is the best uh, super band to wait in the world. He'd knock out Carl Frampton. And he's on Sky Sports offering him a check. So that's a bit schizophrenic right there. Why don't people mention things about that? You know, so it's not just about the fighters. It's not just about the fighters. Uh, it's about... Um, just look at the people in, in, in a whole being honest and saying these pundits are, are can we take them really seriously you know nobody gets it perfect but if you listen to someone like Paulie Manaji he talks a lot of sense most of the time okay um Luke Fowler says if Price does decide to continue wouldn't Chisora be the best option decent domestic bust up coming off the losses thoughts um I think Price is spent a long time with a, a new trainer he needs to and I, I don't know how to explain this, he needs to get rid of the philosophies that Franny Smith may have given him he needs to get rid of those philosophies the philosophy of what the going back to basics almost what is a jab why are you throwing a jab distance and time and space and looking and modeling his, himself on a Klitschko really looking at Vladimir sit down and have a conversation with Vladimir Vladimir than Vitali because Vladimir has been knocked out. You know, go and talk to Vladimir because it's unlikely. I don't think it's going to be likely that Price and Vladimir will ever fight. I don't think, but I think um, you know, talking to Vladimir and, and and being around Vladimir Klitschko and understanding why Vladimir distance and timing and why he does the things he does. Price also needs to work on his footwork. He needs to work on picking his feet up more than walking around the ring like a, a plodder. You know. There are a lot of things. Maybe he can't do that. Maybe it's not in his anatomy. Maybe he, he will never uh, become a world heavyweight champion. He'll never be a good fighter or a great fighter. But you're never going to find that out with an average trainer. Are you? You know, so uh, we need to see Price use the, you know, squeeze out the best of his abilities. You know, yeah, Justin Bal uh, Balau says, uh, as soon as I saw th jab throw the first jab of the fight, I was worried. Yeah, I was too. The minute he threw the left jab, 
there was a problem. Yeah, the, as soon as they threw the jab, there was a problem. As soon as he threw the left, first left jab, I said, oh my God, he's gone back to this rubbish. And the rest is history. So I really do think, uh, I'll stress it, I can't keep stressing enough. Price needs to find himself a trainer. I think he needs to spend some time soul searching, really digging into his soul. He needs to meet the Klitsch goals, talk to Vladimir in particular, and discuss with Vladimir how he came back from those knockout defeats. I know people say, well, Vladimir was a champion then. He still got knocked out. He's still a man. He still got knocked out. Forget the belt. He got knocked out. And um, I would like to see how he comes back from that. Vladimir is probably less robust than, than, than uh, Price, but he had Emmanuel Stewart. There is not Emmanuel Stewart today. But um, Justin Bilal says, too much for Price to work on for me. Feet, movement. Complete overhaul his jab, even his mindset. Yeah, but that's because he has to completely get rid of all those things that Franny Smith was teaching him, and he needs to get a, a, somebody with a real, like a, like a, what's his name, Nazim Richardson, another guy, an old school trainer, that can talk to him like a brother, really talk to him like a father figure. Uh, I don't know about Price's father figure, or what, what his father's like with him, or what he was like. So stamina issues too, I agree. But I think those stamina issues could be mental rather than physical. Um, yeah, so there's some deep line issues there. And um, he can overhaul. The jab can be dealt with, definitely. Um, a complete overhaul, I think, can happen. I think he can do. And look at the, let's look at Amir Khan's career. I know you talk about the complete overhaul. But, you know, if you look at Amir Khan, since he's got moved up to a welterweight division, he hasn't gone and fought any real punches. He fought Danny Garcia, who was a puncher. We saw what happened there. You know, um, you saw him get wobbled by Algeri. So, you know, I think Khan is another one of these fighters that is vulnerable around a puncher. Do you think that his stamina issues are due to his lack of confidence? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. I think... Uh, I remember my trainer telling me years ago, he said to me, um, fear can do two things to you. It can be your best friend and it can make you bigger, stronger, faster, hit harder, absorb shots better, or it can paralyze you. It can slow you down and keep your feet. You're walking through mud. You know, you are more likely to be weaker and uh, your stamina will be less. So once I understood that from my trainer, in my mind, I understood nerves became my best friend. So before a fight, you know, you'd have these nerves that come on you and your nerves are, oh, you know, um, my opponent, oh, not even before the fight, in the gym, you're thinking these nerves are, I've got a fight coming up and my opponent could do this and my opponent could do that. But then I brought it back to myself. What am I training for? Why am I training? I'm training because, you know, I want to be the best that I possibly can be. You know, if I train myself to be the best I can possibly be, and if I can run harder and I can hit those bags harder and I can put that time in training in, at the end of the day, I've given myself the best possible chance and the best possible me nobody can be. And that's the sort of mindset you need to have as a fighter. That's the sort of mindset that needs to be built inside of you. That no matter what I face in the ring, I've prepared, I've trained 100%, and I know that I've put the game plan in place. I'm not sure if David Price could ever, you know, the game plan, whether the, the game plan could, um, you know, um, would, I don't think, I don't know. I don't know whether, the, I, I could tell there was differences with Tommy Brook, Brooks when Brooks was there. I could see how Price was able to catch punches and he was rolling a bit more because if you look at Price before he fought Tommy Thompson, he was a bit more upright like that. But if you see where after the thing, he was, blocking and dick ducking and, and and trying to move a bit more. And in the first round, he got clipped with some good shots. He got hit with some damn good shots by, by Tepper in the first round. And he got cut and he got hit with punches and he was rolling the shots. So he, he, he kind of like, he was getting caught. He was getting caught with some good shots here and there. And you could think, oh, okay. Oh, we took a good shot there. Oh, we got caught again. Oh, we got caught again. It was almost as if somebody had given Tepper inside information said 
listen when you when you go against price when you go against price you've got to get inside hit him hard hit him early put the pressure on him don't allow this guy to dictate the fight because as long as he dictates this fight we're in trouble we've got to hit him early you know and test his confidence issues and of course price has been dropped after he fought Tony Thompson, but got off the floor and won a fight. So all these people say, well, Price has got no heart. He did get knocked down in another fight and did get up to win that fight. So got knocked down in the first round. I think it went 10 rounds. So I don't, I just think there are bits to David Price that need to be, so it's a percentage game, I think. it's the If you look at Vladimir Klitschko, you notice he doesn't throw big looping hooks the only time he throws a hook like when he fit Pulev he threw the left hook because Pulev had no defense to the left hook so he's always and he, when he threw the left hook it'd be a leaping left hook and it was distance and timing throw the jab wait for Pulev to drop left hook bang left hook you know um who dropped price I can't remember the guy who dropped the price he dropped him in the first round was it on it was parlor I think it was parlor was it maybe parlor that dropped price maybe parlor that dropped price yeah, so I was right. So um, when I when I when I think about that, I think to myself, he got off the floor from that. So if you can get off the floor, that shows you do have some heart, you know. And yes, he got caught by a cracking punch by Tepper, but that was a mistake. That was a mistake. That some things you just when you're in up close. You've got to make a decision. See, Vladimir Klitschko, you never catch Vladimir Klitschko getting caught with a punch like that. That's because that sort of thing has been trained out of him. That's because he's had a world-class trainer sit down with Vladimir and say, look, Vlad, there are certain, like imagine man will say, there are certain areas that you danger zones. And Price doesn't know what the danger zones are for him. Because if he knew what the danger zones were, there's no way to got caught with a punch like that. That's where people come along and then say the great line that everyone's been saying to me, well, the top level fighters wouldn't have got caught with a punch like that. Well, the top level fighters probably wouldn't have got training like that to have got caught with a punch like that. That's all down to deck training. What are you doing in training? Like, for example, when you saw Andy Lee knock out um, Jackson, that punch where he, where he was on the ropes and getting hurt and then instinctively threw that shot and knocked Jackson out when he looked on the verge of getting knocked out himself, that was instinctive. That wasn't something that um you know you could see where where booth had trained it into him that you know when you're in a position like that throw this shot here bang and then in the fight you see he lands this shot when he's in trouble he lands a shot and knocks john john jackson out so it's instinctive there because that's been trained to a point where it's inside of him luke Powell, luke fowler says it's a shame really if price would have won last night Think of the fights that could have been made. I still think the Joshua fight can be made. Price has a passion, a passionate fan base button. Indeed, he does, Luke Fowler. Indeed. Um, Matthew Wall says, just got your feed now, Ingram. I'm well behind for some reason. Top bloke. Um, goes, uh, who cares what pundits think and say? Pekka Decker says, most pundits copy and steal one-liners from Jim Ross and Mi <laughs> Michaela. Or Michelle Cole, Mikey Bay says live show. Yes, I'm live to the. I'm late to the party. Very late, late, very late. Uh, Justin Bilal says I still like to see Price versus AJ. Maybe AJ versus White in December. The hardest part, Luke, is that Price is such a lovely bloke, and I think that's all we want the best for him. He is. He's a lovely bloke, and um, if Price were to come back and turn it all around. It would be amazing. You'll have to forgive me. I haven't had anything to eat or drink or drink the water, but it's not going down well. Now, if Dillian White were to turn around and knock Anthony Joshua out in December, if you were to do that, what would you say? Because Dillian White, who's he been? I mean, a lot of people talk about Dillian White. He's a very talented guy, but who's he been? And then if Joshua beats Dillian White, then what happens? Who did Joshua beat before he beat Dillian White? 
the guys that everyone expected him to be. So, Ingram, are you ready for the upsets tonight live on Sky? <laughs> I just want to see Joe Gallagher in the corner, I've said it before. Um, I still don't think Collis should be fighting tonight. I still don't think Collis should be fighting tonight um, in a world title fight. I still think Collis should have had a warm up fight before the world title fight. But I guess maybe he's honouring some contract Eddie Hearn. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't think Collis should be fighting tonight. I think we should have seen a warm up with him, see what he looked like before he had his world title shot. Um, Crawler is an is a decent fighter. I haven't even spent much. I'm going to spend more time to look at this fighter tonight to do a prediction video. Darley, I'll have a look at him. Um, as for Scott Quigg, like I said before, it's his biggest fight of his career. This is his breakthrough fight. If Quigg can destroy Martinez tonight, then he really is in that position of being a world champion, of a world champion of some sort of substance. Because you beat Martinez, um you know you expect Collar to lose and frankie to lose who's frankie frankie who frankie who's frankie i expect um quick got quick and crawl both to lose tonight actually to be honest i do um but it'd be great to see um, um quick win tonight i really do uh, Quick should win, but I think it'll be harder for him than the odds suggest. Yeah, well, I'd love to see Quick win. I really would. I think Quick's a, a good fighter. In fact, I like him a lot. Not Mr. Personality, no, but I'd love to see him win. I really would. Really honestly, I would. So, so I, I've... Oh, wow, Buglione's fighting tonight. Who's he fighting against? I like Frankie Buglioni, but I told him. I, I told him wrong. I, I said to him, "Look, mate, I predicted you get you'd lose. Uh, I predicted you'd lose early in your career. I think you get spot by somebody who was half decent." I said it to him to his face, and you can see the interview. Um, and I thought that he'd make really under the Collins that he'd make the adjustments, but I don't know. He, he I thought he'd get rid of Lee Markham real quickly, but that fight went to a draw. So. Has Frank Bookley only found his level or what? I don't, uh, um, Luke Fowler says, I don't think White is capable of beating Joshua. But then again, I thought Johnson was, uh, Thompson was getting sparked again. Oh, uh, but then again, I thought Thompson was getting not sparked up by prize. Boxing is a, a strange game. Marky Bay says, Bookley only fighting on Sky. I should be fighting this guy, should he? In fact, Fred Guglielmi was a was a box nation fighter. Yeah, I think a lot of people are saying Dylan White wins. If Dylan White wins, who's Dylan White? Dylan White beaten? So I don't know. I don't think Dylan White should be fighting Joshua in December. I think Dylan White should be going about his own business. I think he should fight the likes of McDermott and fight uh, Gary Cornish. Dylan White should be fighting Gary Cornish, you know, and fighting, um, you know, those guys. Yeah, I thought as much. Buglio would fight. Yeah. Now, Buglio, who's, who's Buglio fighting against, by the way? So I don't know. I know the last bit, he, he the, the Tudor fight got cancelled. But I don't know. So I don't want to make this a long show. So all I'm saying is uh, Price needs help. I never want to come across as condescending to any fans and i do apologize for those to those fans that um may have felt i may have been slightly condescending i also want to say that uh, it was an emotional passionate night, la night last night and because 10 youtube channels say that price should retire it doesn't mean that i should be 11 channels to say that those of you who know me by now know that i'm not like that and I'm not just saying it for saying sake. I've given good reason why I don't think Price should retire. I think Price has fought his career basically with the skill set of the amateur days, and he just doesn't cut it at, at world level. 
he's got away with it at his domestic level and I just think now he needs a top class trainer um, we're yet to know if Anthony Joshua um, is good enough above domestic the domestic level we still don't know that because he hasn't fought anybody to retest him yet um, and if 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 Dylan White were to knock Joshua out or beat Joshua then you know you still would say it's domestic because Dylan White hasn't fought anybody of any real note to say yeah he's he's world class or he's he, you know he's European level so there you go um could could Joshua beat Tepper could Dillian White beat Tapper? These are interesting questions. It's all well saying it, but Tepper hits very hard. Very hard. Excellent stuff. All right, well, that case, the boxing and the cards are now live on Top Rank. I'll be watching it now. Guys, thank you so much. This has been Ingram Jones from Bay Loric TV. Really appreciate the love, and um, I hope that David Price gets his shit together. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm out.